Hello listener, my class is doing a project about water and the different impacts the world has on it. The twist is, it has to be a pachakacha, a video with 20 slides that are 20 seconds each. Please enjoy! Scientists distinguish the different freshwater environments by how the water moves. The water flowing in rivers and streams move fast, lakes and ponds move slower. Wetlands and marshes are shallow areas of water. The water is unmoving for most of the year. All these environments have animal and plant life. The ocean, salt water, is split up into two different environments, the open water, also known as pelagic zone, and the bottom of the ocean, which is known as benthic zone. The pelagic zone is then divided into three subzones, sunlight zone, 0 to 200 meters, sunlight enters this zone, allowing photosynthesis in plants, twilight zone, 200 to 1000 meters, the light that reaches this zone is dim, so plants cannot grow, and midnight zone, 1 to 4000 meters. Light cannot reach the zone. The benthic zone is only divided into two subzones, abyssal, 4 to 6,000 meters. This zone is at the bottom of the ocean. The temperature reaches freezing and the water pressure is extremely large. The second zone is hadal, which is greater than 6,000 meters. This zone can be discovered in the deepest ocean trenches. Organisms that live in each environment. In freshwater environments, the variety and quantity of organisms depend on how far down into the water sunlight reaches, how much nutrients are in the water, how deep the water is, how fast or slow the water is moving, and the oxygen level of the water. Some organisms can live in all or any mix of factors there are. For example, the stickleback fish can adapt to whatever environment there is in freshwater. However, a stickleback from one lake can be very different from a fish from another close by lake. The reason for this is, they get accustomed to the environment they're living in. Some freshwater organisms from around the world include American alligators, river otters, snow geese, hippopotamuses, bristletails, which is an insect with a long tail, mayflies, dragonflies and damselflies, catfish, eels, goldfish, piranhas, chichilid, and tetra. This is just some of the animals out of the very many in the world. On to saltwater organisms. In the pelagic zone, there is an abundant supply of food, and sunlight warms the water. Plankton and algae provide food for the other organisms in the ocean. Those plants and animals are eaten by fish, then eaten by larger animals in the ocean. This process is known as the food chain. About 90% of all sea creatures live close to the surface of the ocean, and about 10% live in complete darkness. A lot of animals rely on bioluminescence which is the ability for certain animals to light up from a chemical reaction. Sea creatures come in many shapes and sizes. They can range from a teeny microscopic organism to a giant blue whale. Large fish are found in colder, deeper water. Water that is shallow and warm found near the equator provide a home to many small fish and plants. Humans affect on these environments by polluting a whole lot. Although organisms can break down a lot of the waste, we are still dumping too much in. Pollution can be point source or non-point source. Point source is pollution caused directly and non-point source is caused indirectly. An example of point source is oil spilling out of boats and cars. Point source pollution is easy to find and to control because they are in a single location. A big example of point source pollution is oil leaking from cruise ships, transportation of good ships, and tankers. When these boats are traveling far, they are giving off a lot of oil. Non-point source pollution is a bunch of little things that combine and cause a big effect on the water environment. Most of the non-point source pollution is caused from runoff. The pollutants in runoff may include sediment from construction sites and crops, bacteria and nutrients from animal waste, and faulty septic systems. Waste, oil, and other toxic items have been polluting the ocean for thousands of years. The main cause of this pollution is humans. For a very long time, we have been damaging our water environment. But really, what goes around comes around. We are contaminating a source of food for us humans to eat, which is only hurting ourselves. Did you ever think acid would be a factor in water pollution? Well, it is. Acid precipitation is a type of rain contained with acidic sub substances. Living in a lake as a result of acid precipitation would feel like swimming in vinegar. Acid precipitation can kill plants and animals, including, including entire lakes and forests. Soil that is highly acidic is not a good source for growing. 
To try and keep our water environment clean, I promise to do five things. First, I promise to think twice about littering. For example, whenever I have a chocolate bar wrapper, I will find the nearest garbage can, and if there isn't one, I will keep it with me until I find one. Second, I will buy things locally. Instead of buying something that has been shipped from Thailand, I will check and see where it's from and choose the one that has been brought to me from a closer place. Thirdly, I will dispose of animal waste appropriately. Rather than leaving a dog's waste just lying on the ground, I will make sure that it's disposed in the right place, where it won't, won't harm our environment. Fourthly, I will travel less on water, or at least tra travel with a non-oil using boat. Instead, I will choose to go to another place, one where it doesn't require a boat. And if it's mandatory that I travel by boat, I will go that time, but choose not to another time. And fifthly, I promise I will lessen the amount of seafood or freshwater organisms that I consume. I will choose to eat other meat if necessary, or I will simply not eat any meat whatsoever at that meal. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned lots from it. This is a list of references where I got my information from. I got most of my information from BC Science 8 textbook and the pictures from the list of websites below. Thanks to all these references who made it possible for me to do this project.